Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Shakira Najam, also known as Kira Star. And I am here today to share a message that I know has the potential to truly be healing. And it's a tough su subject, sensitive topic. Um, this is actually my fourth time trying to record this video because I'm having some issues with my storage on my phone. So um, it's really taking me a lot of persistence to get this message out to you today. But I also know that that is a sign that there are some forces that doesn't want this to be heard. So I pray and hope that it finds you in good health and good spirits. And if not, that it can help with your healing. Okay, so I'm going to start out with a prayer. This is my fourth time praying this prayer today on video. I had prayed this morning, which that's when I got the um, the download from the Most High to actually share this with you guys. But I'm going to pray the Al-Fatiha, which is an Arabic prayer that Muslims pray. And I will pray it and then I will translate it into English for you guys which I'm gonna have to read it because I'm still memorizing it in English. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah ar-Rabbil al-Amin, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Malik yomidin, iyaka nabudu wa iyaka nasta'in, iddina sirat ala mustaqim, sirat ala dina an amta alayhim, gari al magdubi alayhim, Walla darling. Amen. Okay. Okay, so there are different translations in English, but this is my favorite one. It is in the name of God, the Lord of mercy, the giver of mercy. Praise belongs to God, the Lord of the world, the Lord of mercy, the giver of mercy, master of the day of judgment. It is you who we worship, it is you who we ask for help. Guide us on the straight path. The path of those you have blessed, those who incur no anger, and not gone astray. Amen. Okay. So, a little history. I've been reciting the al Fatiha since I was about two or three years old. But as I got older, um, I stopped saying it. And so, I recently, this year actually... No, it was last year. Last year, I made a goal to go ahead and learn it again memorize it and so i'm still having to memorize it in english because i've been reciting it in arabic all of this time um but it's important for me to actually know it in english too so that's the reason why i had to read it but um so the topic of today's video is shame okay um speaking from a personal experience I've never been the type of person that was afraid to share my testimony with other people. Like, I'm an open book. I never really felt embarrassed. It is very rare that I feel embarrassed to tell people the things that I've gone through. But I have dealt with opposition from people um, close to me, you know, feeling a way once I do share my story. Like... You know how you start to tell someone something you went through and then they be like, oh, don't, you shouldn't tell people that, you know, or, you know, people don't need to know all your business. Just keep it to yourself. And I'm realizing today that that has had a really big effect on me. Um, I've always been very well aware that sharing our stories and our testimonies with other people gives them empowerment because nine times out of the ten some something that you've been through someone close to you has been through as well and so being able to connect um even if it's not the best you know mo most positive thing it still has the potential to heal you and heal others you know we learn from one another from our experiences and so i I just always been okay like on Facebook um on social media but especially Facebook I used to like just air all my business out like I did not care <laughs> like 
because in my mind, I'm knowing it's going to help somebody, you know. And so as I got older, you know, we go through things more as we get older. And I just I just started feeling like, you know what, maybe they're right. Maybe I need to just keep my mouth closed. People don't need to know what I'm going through. They're going through their own things. And the last thing I want to do is trigger somebody or come across like I'm trying to be a victim or I want some sympathy or empathy even though we all do deserve those emotions we we deserve sympathy sometimes we deserve empathy sometimes but I'm never wanting to portray myself as a victim because I am not a victim yes I have been victim to some things that's been very very tough to get through in life, but I don't see myself as a victim. I see myself as somebody who has been empowered by my experiences because I also take ownership in, you know, any decisions that I may have made that have led to certain things in my life that played out to to cause me harm. Um, So starting out, the definition of shame is a painful emotion that can arise from a sense of guilt, impropriety, or shortcoming. It can also be described as a feeling of embarrassment or humiliation that comes from the perception of having done something immoral or dishonorable. Okay, so some signs that someone may be feeling shame include avoiding eye contact and looking down speaking in a soft voice or remaining silent that's the main thing i want to talk about feeling like they want to leave or move but unable to worrying that they may be that they may say the wrong thing or appear foolish wishing they could shrink into the walls and feeling like they are unable to be their true selves so it's two things two two of these things that i've i've suffered with the main two i would say well actually three as I've gotten older, I um, I have I've noticed myself being more silent, okay, and having more of a soft voice, not being as boisterous and loud, um, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But silence is the main thing I want to talk about. Um, also, for me, feeling unable to be my true self. I know that I have suffered with that. You know, you get into a crowd. It could even be like your family. You know, I I find myself going around like people that even I love and just instead of being my true self, I kind of like blend in, you know, I, I maybe won't speak up as much and I just let everybody else kind of talk and just, you know, keep this aura about myself of positivity and, you know, I'm just not the type of person who ever wants to affect anybody negatively. And so even if I'm feeling a negative emotion, I might, you know, just keep it to myself. Everything don't need to be said. Everything doesn't need to be heard. But I am realizing how much that has crippled me. Okay, but the main thing that I want to talk about is why people want to silence you. You know, you might be strong. You know, you might have those same characteristics where you know, like, I don't have anything to be ashamed of. You know, whatever I went through, it was a part of my life lessons. It was a part of my journey. And I'm going to share this with other people because I know somebody else is going through this or have been through it. And you're well aware that that's going to help you and it's going to help them. You know, people want to hear the real. They don't want to just be like sugarcoated. Everybody wants to know what you've been through so that they can have a genuine connection with you if they really want that. You know, of course, there's some people they don't care, but we're not worried about them. You know, we are here for people who actually want to grow together and understand the importance of bonding with one another and helping each other ascend to these high vibrational spaces. Um, but I noticed a lot of the times when I would speak up about things that I've been through, 
so many times people would tell me, oh, you telling too much of your business. Like, you need to just keep it quiet. Like, no, like, there's no reason to be sharing all of that. But as you can see, in 2024, sorry, my nose started running. I don't know if that's a sign or something, but, <laughs> um, because my nose literally was not running at all. Now I'm starting to run a little bit. Okay. But, um... I'm realizing how much that has affected me. You know, as I got older, I'm 36 years old and I have two children of my own. And it's like a double edged sword with social media and people sharing their, their life. Because on one side, we have people sharing all of the positive things, you know, we feel like that's all we're seeing from some people. And then from other people, it's like, they're sharing negative things and it becomes overwhelming, you know. So I believe that the best thing is to have a healthy blend of both. I've noticed that some people will repeat their story over and over and over again. And I guess that's important, especially if you're someone who's bringing in new people, new followers, um, building your community and so some people might not know what you've been through and where you come from but to me sometimes that's kind of annoying like if I've already heard your story I don't want to hear it over and over and over again you know what I mean it's like I respect it I know it's important I don't diminish the value of your story but sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming you know you don't want to be beat over the head with negativity too much you want to see sometimes you want to see that more that more positive you know side of someone but i'm realizing that it's really important to be solution based so if we're going to get on here and we're going to be influencing the world we have to come with some solutions we can't just only talk about my daughter just woke up. She just woke up. I had to pause the video, y'all, because she, <laughs> she got her little undies on and stuff. I will have to pause it again, but what was I saying? Okay, so you would want to have a perfect balance. You know what I mean? You don't want to... Me, personally, I don't want to go on your social media and only see just, like, the good things. Tell me what, what you did and what you had to overcome to get to where you were, you are, and um, give me some pointers. Give me some solutions on how I can implement those same things into my life so that I can have a more positive um, existence as well. And so for me, it's just been like social media is. It's a great tool. Like I'm so grateful for it because we are able to really connect in ways that we couldn't when we were growing up. I'm an 80s baby, okay? I was born in 1987 before the internet, you know? So I remember the transition of, you know, AOL, <laughs> hearing that annoying beeping when you turn it on the internet and not having cell phones, having beepers, you know? And really being forced to have actual human interaction, you know. But now we have the ability to just log on to our devices and communicate and connect that way, which is awesome. But even for me, I'm trying to find a balance because I do find myself sometimes getting on there and feeling like, man, like, when is it going to be my turn? You know what I mean? Like, what am I doing wrong? And so, of course, that led me to start doing my shadow work and really getting to know myself. And so these days, I am just really, really taking a deep look into my life. And that is why this came up, because I woke up this morning and I wasn't feeling the best. You know, I was just like, I have a situation going on and it's been very, very confusing for me. God has been testing my patience, my loyalty. Um, so just a little bit, I'm going to give y'all a little, little something for now. So for the last year, it just made a year this month in July. I've been celibate for the first time. Um, 
since I was 16. Since I lost my virginity, honey. Okay, I lost my virginity at 16 years old. I graduated high school at 16 years old. So I was a little bit, I felt that I was a little bit more mature than the average 16 year old. But looking back, I wasn't. Like, I made horrible decisions. I... I made crazy decisions. When I tell you, because I was 16 and in college, okay, I started college at 16. So I'm I'm hanging out with people my age, but I'm also hanging out with people that's older than me. I'm going to the club. I got a fake ID. I'm hitting the back streets with my friends all up in the hood. Like, I had a great life, a great youth. I will say that I really was... I was always doing something, okay? I was always doing something to the point where I stopped really focusing on school because A, it wasn't really something I wanted to do. I always had a passion for music, but you know, it wasn't something that my family really wanted me to do. My family wanted me to go and get a college degree. And so instead of following my own desires, which a lot of us do, um, to please my, my parents, I went to college, you know what I mean? Which I still, I wanted to go to college too, you know, I, it's not like <laughs> they, they forced me, they tied me up and said, hey, you going to college. No, I ultimately made the decision. I wanted to go to cosmetology school because I had already been doing hair my whole life. It's another passion of mine. And so my plan was to go to cosmetology school so that I could be making money while I'm chasing my dream of music. And it just didn't happen that way. I ended up still doing hair, but, you know, so it didn't seem like a big deal because I was still able to use my hands. I'm gifted with my hands, you know what I mean? But, <laughs> um... I'm gifted with my hands, so I was still able to do hair, which is something I love, but, you know, it turned out I didn't even finish college like I should have, you know, I, um, I'm, you know, I still, it's still on my bucket list because I want to finish what I started, but I did four years of college and was shy of the credits to have my actual degree, so... That taught me a hard lesson. That taught me looking back that I should have, you know, stuck to what I wanted for myself. I should have done what God had put on my heart to do because that's clearly my life purpose, you know. But when you're younger, you're impressionable. Of course, you want to please your parents. You want to please your family. And so, you know, you don't realize that you have knowledge within yourself and that you don't always have to follow completely what they want you to do. But because I guess I was still 16, not quite an adult, that's just, that's what, what happened. Okay. But that's an example. Um, but I'm, I'm sharing that because this is my mentality. I know what I want for myself. God gave me a clear vision over my life, what he wanted me to do. I actually remember the day I was about three years old when God told me he wanted me to do music. Okay. I remember the day I was literally in kindergarten. Um, cause I started school early. I was literally sitting in kindergarten class and the teacher asked us what we wanted to do. And I remember God telling me, not myself telling me, but God telling me that music is what I was here to do. Okay. Fast forward to me being 36 years old. I record my own music, but nowhere near the amount that I should be doing it. And so it's still something that I'm working on, you know, getting into and just doing just because it's something I'm passionate about, but also because I know that that's what God wants me to do. And so I often think and wonder, like, if I had followed my passions, how much of negative experiences I would have avoided because I would have probably been doing what God put me on this earth to do. But because I didn't do that, I contributed to my own self feeling lost, 
feeling like, you know, I'm not living in my purpose. And these are things that came later. These feelings came later because all throughout my 20s, I was still recording music and I was still, you know, I felt that I was still working towards who I was supposed to be become. But once I became a mother, you know, that kind of went all out the window for me because it was important for me to, um, as a single mom, provide for my son. You know, I wasn't getting child support and it was just a lot on me, you know, as a young mother. I got pregnant at 22 years old. And here I am because 23, I was 23. And I remember distinctly feeling like, oh, my mom was 22 when she got pregnant with me. I made it a year past my mama. So I'm doing good, you know, <laughs> but not, not realizing, girl, you still a baby. Like you still a baby, 22 years old. Like, come on. So in my 20s, I went through so many situations and I was always vocal about stuff I was going through. Like, I would literally put people on blast. And most of the issues that I faced were with young men. With me being in a relationship, I've always been the type of girl that had a boyfriend. Like, I wasn't never in the streets like that. And if I was in the streets, it was because I was in between boyfriends. I was in between relationships. Um, looking back, I realized that I had a sex addiction, y'all. Like, I really had a sex, a sex addiction. That was the way that I coped. And when I wasn't getting the attention that I needed, um, so what I would do, me and my boyfriend would not get along. I would break up with him and then I would go explore. I was never the type, I never felt good with like cheating on somebody. You know what I mean? So I, I would give myself that much credit. At least I know that when I did explore my sexuality, I did it and I made sure that I was not in a relationship and I wasn't actually committed to somebody. But I was breaking up all the time. Like, <laughs> I've had so many breakups. Like, so, you know, fast forward to me being 36 years old and, you know, just trying to figure out why my life is where it is, you know. And I realized that I, I was a sex addict. I, no, I used sex can't. to cope with oh my, my emotions, to numb my emotions. No, and it just it it was just a cycle of never feeling fulfillment, never feeling the love that I truly wanted to feel. And um at this time in my twenties I wasn't really sharing my experiences with anybody. You know, it seemed pretty normal. It seemed pretty normal. Mm -hmm. It was what everybody was doing. Everybody was mm -hmm. just out having a good time, living their life. Mm -hmm. I wasn't realizing the effect that it had on my mind, on my spirit, on my soul, mm -hmm. on my heart. And I'm finally at a point where I realized that I'm so sorry to be wiping my nose. Like, I cannot believe my nose is keep running right now. But... I'm finally at a point where I've realized that that was a big obstacle for me. And so last year I decided to just be celibate. I didn't know how long it would be. I'm still celibate now. <laughs> it's been a year. And honestly, it was the best thing that I could have ever done for myself. I've had the most clarity. I've been able to really look at myself and evaluate my past, my present, what I want for my future. But I'm still in the middle of all of this. Mama, my bed, my very skull in. <laughs> yeah, what? 
Okay. Okay. You find it, okay? Okay, so back to shame and guilt, okay? So... It's such a touchy subject for me, you know, because I still kind of feel weird. Like, I feel weird sharing my story because I don't want to embarrass anybody. And that is a big part of it. That's a big part of why we allow people to silence us because, and that's a, that's a big part of why people want to silence you. They don't want you to go around telling your story because it might incriminate them. It might show that perhaps they did not do what they were supposed to do in your life to protect you. This could be parents. This could be family, friends. This could be any type of community. People want to silence you because you sharing. Yes, baby. My baby's going to again. I eat too much candy. Oh, she didn't have no candy. What's she talking about? People want to silence you because once you start telling your story, then they're going to have to face what they did. They're going to have to face the roles that they played. They're going to have to face themselves. Yes, baby. I'm a fox. You're a fox? Okay. <laughs> okay, look at my tail. Okay, I see your tail. Hi, cute fox. <laughs> and so, I just want to get on in here bye. today and tell you. Bye. Bye, bye, baby. Say bye, fox. Bye, fox. Bye, mama. I wanted to get on here today and just encourage you not to allow anybody to shame you into being silent. Because it really is healing when you share your, share your story. And I'm not telling you how to share your story. You know, that's completely up to you. But when I tell y'all, I feel... I could, I, I could take my mask off. You know, I could... I could be used one day as an example of God's grace and mercy and love and what it looks like to fight through those things that made you feel shameful. You know, I'm not in a place in life right now where I can really share um any extravagant life experiences that I'm having right now because I'm not I'm not having a lot of extravagant life experience but I do live in luxury and my luxury is being able to be home with my children every day my luxury is having food in our bellies my luxury is having a roof over our head we live in the hood we live in the hood but when I was pregnant with her, I was homeless. I wasn't homeless very long and I had somewhere to go, but I had no place to call my own. And so I can literally say that despite not having very much right now, I have made progress. And that progress is what I'm holding on to to know that I can go even further. And so today, I, I didn't want to do a very long message. This is a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. But I did want to get on here. I had to get on here and just share my testimony a little bit with you guys. And just remind you, don't let anybody silence you. Your story is your story. And if somebody didn't want you to expose to the world what they put you through or the things you've been through, they should have done something to help you not go through those things. You know, we got to stop trying to cover up other people's contributions 
to our depression, our anxiety, our feelings of being lost, you know, that's ultimately what you're doing. When somebody tells you, oh, you need to, you don't need to, you don't need to share that. Nine times out of ten is because they feel guilty. They feel guilty about something. And you know what? That's not your fault. That's not your problem, okay? So, happy Sunday. Let Allah, God, the Most High, continue to guide you. Be in your truth, whether you want to share your story or not. Own up to it, even if it's just you at, at home. Look back over your life and think about all the things you've been through that have contributed to where you are today. It's a reason why your reality looks like what it looks like but the great thing about it is it can change you can change your reality and that's exactly what shadow work is is going through your life journey all of these experiences that you've had and really get into the nut and berries okay get into the the precipice of the things and the actions that you took why did you make that decision that led you to being abused why did you make that decision that led you to being in poverty why did you make that decision that led you to the abundance that you have this is important it's important for us to acknowledge who we are and the things that we've been through in order for us to get ahead and move forward in life okay and I am not here. And like I said, okay, I'm still living in the hood. Okay, I am in the hood. I literally have an alley right next door to me. There's homeless people in my area. Okay, and although that is my circumstance, what do I do when I can? I just gave a lady some shoes yesterday. Some flip flops, you know, because I saw her outside walking with no shoes on her feet. And I'm still trying to figure out how I'm finna pay my rent. I'm I'm struggling to find a job, which I have never had that issue before, you know. But obviously, this is happening for a reason. It's happening because God wants more for me. And God wants, wanted to sit me down. And all also, all of the decisions that I made in the past is what brought me here. And so, I could recognize that. And... That is really, truly the first step to releasing the shame, releasing the fear, and releasing yourself from feeling like you have to be silenced. We all have a story to tell. What do they call us? The collective? We are the collective because together we are one. Nobody's story is higher than the other. Nobody's story is less valuable than the other. And I don't believe that people realize what they're doing to you when they ask you or tell you not to tell your story. It really does have an effect on you if you're somebody who listens to that. You know, not being able to live in your truth is the biggest injustice that you can do to yourself. Because how do you grow? How do you find out? who you're supposed to become if you can't even be real about who you've been okay so i know this is a tough subject i love y'all i appreciate y'all thank you for listening um i will be back with more stories i've been through so many things my life has literally been a movie i'm trying to tell y'all like looking at me i know a lot of people assume that this girl ain't been through nothing. <sighs> Let me tell you, looks can be deceiving, okay? <laughs> so, I love y'all. No. Have a beautiful Sunday. I and I will be back me. later. I'm not really sure what the next topic is going to be about, but I'm definitely communicating with the Most High and allowing those messages to come directly from the Divine. So, we'll see what's next on the agenda. Thank you for coming to the Star Space. Like, subscribe, comment. Tell me how you feel about these videos or this video in particular. And um, yeah, don't let anybody silence you. 
You have a voice for a reason, okay? Love, peace, light. <laughs>